Okay, so we're going to go over the installation of the new uh, Dynamite RC kill switch. Pretty simple. First, you got to remove the six screws holding on the fan cover. There's two Phillips screws on the top, and then there's usually four Allen screws on the bottom of the crankcase. So just remove those, set them aside, and uh, just pull the fan cover off, taking note that the push button kill switch is going to separate from the fan cover in between the engine cover and the fan cover. So just lift straight off, pretty simple. And then you can see you've got a couple of spade connectors on the back and the front of the ignition coil as well as on the back and front of the kill switch, the push button switch. So you're going to remove the ignition coil. There's two screws holding it to the cylinder. You want to be careful as you remove it, there are two plastic spacers that go between the coil and the cylinder and you don't want to lose those. So set those aside somewhere that you won't uh, lose them. It's also nice to work over a nice smooth surface so that if they do drop out you can find them. Uh, use some needle nose pliers to just gently pull up on the uh, spade connector. Be careful not to bend the tabs on the ignition coil. This will free the push button switch that you're then just going to rock back and forth on the connectors and those will easily pull apart. You do use this switch so you don't want to discard it. Next you're going to use the wiring harness from the kill switch and you're going to attach that to the spade connectors. Use the short end of the wiring harness spade connectors. Uh, it doesn't matter which is positive, which is negative. Just uh, install them like that. Next is you will in take the long end of the wiring harness and you'll attach that onto the ignition coil. Again, there's nothing, there's no positive, no negative, just install one on the other side. Uh, reinstall the ignition coil, making sure that you use the little spacers. Uh, oh, before we get to that, you do want to remove the uh, interference filter. It's just a little magnet that clips on, so you just simply open it up, set it aside, and we'll install that later. So, with the ignition coil back on, gap the coil uh, to the flywheel just using a business, business card. Uh, route the wire so that it kind of goes up and out of the fan cover there. Uh, reinstall the fan cover, pretty simple, make sure there's room enough for the wires. Uh, reinstall the six screws that hold it in. So pretty much just backwards from what you're doing forwards. You can use a little bit of blue thread lock on those bottom four screws if you'd like. And then after this, go ahead and install the engine into your car, and then we'll go from there. You can reattach the interference filter, the little magnet filter, just in line on the clip there. So what you're going to do now is you're going to install the wiring harness into the, the kill switch itself. It's pretty simple. There's a spot that plugs into the receiver. Uh, I plugged mine into channel 3 on my radio. You can use auxiliary 1 or 2, depending on the radio brand that you have. Uh, there's a little... Uh, status light, there's little jumper pins for the different types of batteries that you're using, there's uh, for the battery voltage cutoff. You want to remove both of these if you're using a LiPo. Uh, there's a 4 volt and a 5 volt setting and as well as no, no voltage cutoff. I'm using a LiPo so I'm using the LiPo cutoff. You're now going to adjust the radio to the uh, kill switch so you want to, for the Fataba radio you want to activate, uh, I'm going to use the push button switch number 2 to function channel 3 and so that uh, is something that can be programmed on your radio. Uh, this is the Fataba 4PV and so you can see on channel 3 it swings in full direction one way or the other. The status light on the kill switch will show you if it's activated or disactivated. So red means you can fire it up, the light off means it'll kill the engine. So the thing that you want to make sure that you do is set your fail safe point so that channel 3, if it loses radio connection, it also kills the engine. You can see that the um, the servo for the throttle brake goes to full brake and it also kills the ignition. So again, it turns off. Uh, if, if it's not doing that, you want to go through, read the manual and, and set that up correctly. Uh, route your wire appropriately. 
and so that it's not going to be interfering with any driveline stuff. Uh, lastly, for the Vecta, I just I just shoved the little LED light through the charging port there, and then I can see the status of the light through it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe if you have any questions.